This is Ragnarok, but it looks a little different, doesn't it? That's because we are running the Primal Fear mod. And in this video, I attempt the 100 day challenge, but I have a few goals that I need to achieve that were set by a few friends of mine. Hi, Aaron, it is I, Mr. Miola. Being the king of Primal Fear means I know this mod back to front, and I believe you should be able to defeat the Demonic Reaper Empress by day 50. There is no excuse for you not to accomplish this. So if you fail to accomplish this challenge, I think there's only one suitable answer. You gotta smash two eggs on your head. That is all. Mr. Miola, out. Well, you heard Mr. Miola, the challenge is set. We will receive our next challenge on day 50. But first, I need to introduce you to someone very special to me. This is Lucy, and she's from today's sponsor, Age of Origins. Yes, she's been bitten, but we must protect Lucy from a crazy horde of zombies. I need your help, or we might lose her. You can join together with other players and take down these zombies in three different game modes. Tower defense, cannon defense, or race down the road in your crazy zombie killing machine. Now, I prefer to destroy these flesh-eating idiots in tower defense. I like to slow them down early with an EMP tower and obliterate them with my laser towers. And with all the loot that I collect, I then upgrade my city. Because after all, Lucy does like nice things. But if all else fails, we will then recruit this guy. He will fight alongside our army against everything and everyone. Turns out there's also a PvP mode. So yeah, other players are trying to take my Lucy away from me. Please help me by protecting Lucy by clicking the link below and downloading Age of Origins now. And as a special thank you, I'll add a code that gives you $60 worth of good stuff in game. Thank you Age of Origins for sponsoring this video. Ah yes, so we wake up on a strange island once again only to look at our arm, realize there's something in it, and scratch it. Oh, and we're also naked. Cause yeah, who doesn't like waking up naked on a beach? And since we're playing the Primal Fear mod, everything in this game wants to kill me. Including this big ass dodo. Wait, is it going to attack me? Why are you chasing me? Bro, why are you chasing me? Go away, big ass dodo. Look, we start off this adventure, obviously, like we always do, trying to collect some berries, some fiber, punch some trees for wood and thatch. But see this guy right here? Yeah, that guy right there. Well, in about 3.9 seconds, he does this. Oh, no. What the frick? I got killed by a toxic zombie dodo. When we awoke from our death, we realized these dodos can be quite deadly. So after collecting some wood, we got chased by dodos again. <laughs> Oh, crap, what is that? Why am I scared of freaking dodos? With all this craziness already happening in this modded video, I needed to make a base that we could call home, you know, just so we're safe. And I've always liked this rocky formation right in Viking Bay. I think a lot of the dinosaurs can't get to us up here. I hope. And now that we've established where we want to live, it's time to start building our base. And here's a sped up montage. Nice. And now that we're all safe and sound, it's on to day two. And before the sun rises, we decide to make ourselves a metal pickaxe and a metal hatchet. Then we went straight down to the beach to try and find ourselves a Pteranodon, because we all know hitting them skies makes our lives so much easier. We found this one, put a bolo around it, and then we stabbed it with our poison tip spear, because we all know that's the best way to make friends, I think. Maybe. And now that we have a crossbow and some hide armor, I feel confident. I went out to get me some revenge on this toxic dodo. Yeah, take that stupid dodo. When we returned to our PT, it was fully tamed. So we put a saddle on him and hit the skies. And then the rest of the day, we just went around exploring the area just to see what we could see. Day three, we continued exploring. This time we went to the beaver dams. As you can see, there was a crap load of beavers around. So we got the attention of a couple just to move them away from the beaver dam that we wanted. But because they mistook my PT for food, we had to fly to this cliff to get away. I grabbed my crossbow out and then I shot them until they ran away. Then I flew back down to the beaver dam to claim my prize, the cementing paste. And then quickly hightailed out of there before the rest of the beavers came to attack. Then the rest of this day, I continued exploring around this map. I wanted to see what other creatures came in this mod pack. Then while we're flying around, we heard this crazy noise. Whoa, what the f- Turns out in Primal Fear, there's a thing called a buffoon ferox. Yeah, they like bombs and stuff. It's weird holy hell i think it's safe to say that we now know to stay very far away from the buffoon ferox it destroyed all the trees too so yeah we continued exploring until we saw this random red monkey just flying off a cliff day four and i decided to make ourselves a new base so i went out and harvested a crap ton of stone because we're gonna make it out of stone this time then i sat on my pt and pondered a new place that we're gonna build where should we go so i took flight in search of our new base location and in the end i just settled for here i think it's a really cool place and i've always wanted to build here so without hesitation i started laying down my foundations and i'm not gonna bore you with the rest let's just skip straight to when it's finished 
And there you have it guys, our finished product. It's something simple and quaint and nice for now. Nothing too crazy, but it is missing a couple things. Yeah, our crafting stuff. So we put down the primal smithy, a normal smithy, and then we went ahead and made ourselves a primal refining forge. It looks cool and apparently it smelts metal a lot quicker. Day five and uh, nothing exciting happened today. But I did craft these soul traps. They're like cryopods, but way better. Day six, we started with our favorite thing, punching dodos. This one didn't make it. And I tried shooting this with a trank arrow. It also didn't make it. In the end, we ended up with four of them. I think that's enough to get us started. Ooh, and one already gave us an egg. Then we went to go get some crystal because we're going to need it to be able to build the thing I'm going to show you in day seven. I chose to go into this cave to be able to get the crystal because being primal fear everywhere else was very scary. And we were lucky enough to score ourselves an ascendant slingshot. Yeah. Day seven and we built that thing that I said we we're going to build with the crystal that we got. And here it is. Yes, it's a greenhouse. I know, exciting. It doesn't seem like much, but trust me, it's very important. I then decided we needed a berry gatherer. So I went out and had a look around and then I found this trike. If you've watched my other 100 days, you'll see that I like trikes. They're good. So we put a couple trank arrows in his butt and put him to sleep. But then when we went to put some Midra berries in the trike, we got swooped by an angry pigeon. And while we waited for the trike to wake up from its eternal slumber, we started building some pipes to irrigate our crops. And by now, our trike was finally awake, so there's no time like the present to start harvesting some good old berries. Day 8, we went out to go gather some materials that we're going to need for the future. But while we're out exploring, we saw this. What the frick is that? That's a spirit dodo wyvern. Spirit dodo wyvern with 5.5 million health. See ya freaking later. We did find this obsidian, so we mined it. Then we went over to the volcano area to go get ourselves a dung beetle. We then found some more obsidian, so we mined that as well. But this Bronto decided to ruin that all for us. I'm trying to collect this obsidian. Rude. Day 9 and we built our little dung beetle at home. We then named him Poop Man. Seems appropriate. Then we put Poop Man in his cage so we can start making us some good old fertilizer. Now that our crops are all sorted, it's time to tame some toxic dodos. We're going to need the eggs so we can start crafting some alpha kibble. We then went up to the snow so we could find some little penguins that we could murder for some easy polymer. But there was an origin Kairuku there that seemed to get aggroed on us. That's not good. Holy crap. We got out of there real quick. Heading back to base, I ran out of stamina. I'm dead. And then got attacked by this alpha dimorphodon. Oh, you're not doing much damage. But little did I know there was also a manticore there. And it really didn't want to leave us alone. It started getting really close oh, and it man. even hit us a couple times. Oh, crap. No matter where we went, the thing was still there. But when we got to just about here, I think it got distracted and left us alone. And because we're extremely brave or extremely stupid, we went back to the snow to get some polymer, even with those explosions around us. Turns out the explosions were just a dragon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> blowing things up. With the polymer we gathered, we then created this soul terminal. It's a place we can store our dinos while we don't use them. And with the right settings, it can gather the eggs from the dinosaurs in the terminal. We then finished off day nine with a stroll on our toxic dodo. Yeah, you can ride dodos in this mod. Oh yeah, and we named this dodo Green Bean. Green Bean's freaking cool. Day 10, we start the day off by taming another toxic dodo. This time, we call it Green Spleen. Then, when we go to find another dodo, we get a little bit close to whatever this is. What the? What the? What the, what the frick just happened? Then, when we wake up from our death, we realize we're in the wrong house. I had forgotten to set up a new bed in the new base. So first thing on our agenda is to set up a bed at the new base. Then go back to our body, see if we can retrieve our goods. We've now learned that spirit dodos are bad. It seems to have left this trail of destruction. There were bodies everywhere. We then harvested this fabled styra. And turns out it drops a ton of really good loot. Day 11, we crafted ourselves some flat gear. You know, to protect ourselves from some of the dangers in this world. Then we went out to find ourselves another PT. We did find this level 150 PT, which is going to be pretty good for us and taming it up didn't take us as long thanks to these tame helpers once tamed we then named him birdie we then flew around pretty aimlessly really we we're just trying to get some levels in this birdie you know when you're flying around and you think you're safe well turns out in primal fear you're not not again oh! so early morning on day 12 we went out to go fetch our body we had to sidestep the spirit dodo and then up the ways, we saw that there was a Chaos Dodo and a Spirit Dodo over there too. We finally got to our body and got all our gear back, but then I pressed the wrong button by accident. No. Ah, the wrong button. We eventually got all of our stuff back. And now I wanted to go out and try and tame this Elder Moss Chops. So I bowled him and then built a pillar trap around him, only for him to get out. I gave up after this. We then found ourselves a level 130 PT, so we knocked him out and tamed him. Then we named him Birdie 2. 
Day 13, I went out and tamed ourselves an Alpha Dilo by stabbing it in the face, because that's how you do it. Then I tamed an Alpha Pegamastix, because we need both of them to be able to start laying eggs so we can start creating some more kibble. Day 14, and we tamed yet another Alpha Dilo. Then when we were flying around, we came too close to yet another Spirit Dodo. Not again! But hey, at least this time we didn't die. We are quite far away from our base. So we went to the dead body of our bird, grabbed the PT saddle, and then just ran for it. We eventually found another PT that we knocked out, then tamed, then named him Birdie 3. We then took flight on Birdie 3 to this island, where we found a max level PT. So we had to tame that one as well. While we're waiting for this PT to tame out, we went out and we saw these two Valenosaurs. And they will be handy for our base. So we knocked them out and tamed them as well. And as luck would have it, we found ourselves a level 150 Anki. And I think now with all these tames, you can officially call me the Slave Master. I mean, awesome person that loves Ark. Day 15, we headed over to the Wyvern Nest because I wanted something a little bit more powerful to help us out around the base. And to be honest, I'm pretty sick of dying all the time. So we flew over to one of these nests to steal one of these flying cranky lizard's eggs. And lucky for us, we got a two for one special. But we had to eat one because uh, it was a little bit too heavy for us to fly. Then we flew out of there really quickly because we didn't want to die. But then I realized we weren't even being chased. So we went back to base and placed it in our soul terminal so it could incubate. Then that night, we crafted ourselves a full set of alpha flak gear. Looks pretty good if you ask me. But we need to do something about that hair. There we go. Much better. Wow. Day 16, our alpha lightning wyvern hatched. And we named him Red Lightning because he's red and he's a lightning wyvern. I know, I know, I spelt it wrong. While we're waiting for our lightning wyvern to raise up, we went out to go see if our Anki was tamed. And he was. So we picked him up and brought him home. Then we went out to see how effective our Valenosaur would be. And with his machine gun head thingy, we took down an Elder Itchy, an Apex Kento, and a level 130 Rex. See, don't mess with the dinosaur with pins in his head. Day 17, Red Lightning was all grown up and ready to be ridden. So we took him out to see what he could do. And on this Bronto, he did some pretty decent damage with his lightning attack, but 2,800 damage with his bite attack. It's good, but we need to get some more levels. Once we had some levels to spend, we pumped some into his health and his melee and a little bit into his speed as well. Then we saw these Indominus Rexes eating these Fabled Brontos. And now that we're doing 14k damage, I felt really confident. But then I realized how much damage it's doing to us and it's only a level 20. So we left it alone and went on our way. Day 18, we flew down to the South Wyvern Scar because I wanted to see if there was any decent eggs there. And we found this Apex Fire Wyvern Egg. Even though it's a level 50, Apex is better than Alpha and Alpha is better than Vanilla. So it should be better, right? And when we flew out of the Wyvern Cave, we realized the sun was coming up. So it was a great time to start working on our tan. On the way back to base, we stopped over at the Beaver Dams. Because we know, unlike Paper Scissors Rock, Wyverns beat beavers. Back at base, we placed down a generator and a chemistry bench. So now we can start mass producing drugs to sell on the black market. Oh, I mean, knock out these animals. Day 19, we spent most of the time just flying around the map murdering these helpless creatures for their generous loot. Then we found this Dodicarus, which is going to help us harvest a crap ton of stone so we can start making a crap ton of cementing paste and spark powder. And thanks to this toxic tranquilizer, we put this little baby down in one shot. And then when he woke up from his slumber, we named him Stoner because he smashes stones and that's kind of all he does. Day 20 and it was just basically a farming day, the whole day really. But fun fact, these burnt down trees in Ragnarok, they drop charcoal. And if your wyvern tries to fly at it and flap its wings, that's how we gather it. Day 21, our baby apex fire wyvern hatched. So to celebrate his birth, we went out to test out our new primal mastercraft fabricated sniper. Now it is green and doesn't really go with my red armor, but you know, it's pretty powerful and might come in handy. I wanted to see how much torpor damage we could do. So I shot this fabled Brachiosaurus. Now I don't remember what bullets I was using, but it did do a fair bit of torpor, but I think I really just pissed it off. And how the hell did it run up that rock? Day 22, we tamed our first elemental, this fire chicken, and we named him Charlie. Later that day, we flew over to the swamp area to set up this awesome teleporter. It'll help us get around the map a lot quicker and make our time more efficient. That night, we went down to the south area of the map to go visit our friends, the Wyverns. We went to go say hello to this fire Wyvern, not knowing that there was a freaking necrotic Wyvern there too. Oh crap. Look, mistakes were made, okay? Wow, that was just stupid. That was so stupid. Day 23, we woke up back at base. And thanks to having the awesome teleporter, we can retrieve all the items from our corpse. But unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to our lightning wyvern, Red Lightning.
anyway, now that he's dead, we can just replace him with our Apex Fire Wyvern. And now that we're progressing, we need some more oil and some silica pearls. So it's time to go into the ocean. But first, we need to tame ourselves a Megalodon. But because I'm stupid, I didn't know that the arrows wouldn't pierce through the water. So we dove into the water to take out this Apex Megalodon. Come here, Sharky, Sharky, Sharky. We did work out that we could get him close enough to us to pierce out of the water that we could use our fabricated sniper rifle to put him to sleep. And thanks to some tame helpers and some Apex Kibble, we tamed him up pretty quickly and named him Ian. His name's Ian. Day 24, we rode Ian into the depths of the deep blue sea only to find ourselves some calamari and some crab. And that sounds tasty. So we ate them, both. Then we went to go harvest some oil and some silica pearls. I mean, that's the whole reason why we came here in the first place. Then back at base, we got to our next level and got rid of these primal refining forges to replace it with a primal industrial forge, which is surprisingly smaller than I expected. We went to the swamp area to tame our second elemental the caustic chicken. We want to tame these for some elemental eggs. Day 25, we went out to find some more elemental chickens and we found this ice chicken. But once we knocked it out, we heard these noises. I can't believe the chicken didn't wake up to the noises. After all, the party was bumping. Instead, this happened. Freaking hell. Gave me the fright of a lifetime. So now we're back at base and we die a lot. I figured it was time to upgrade our gear. So we went from alpha now to apex gear. And this is what it looks like. It kind of really looks the same as the Alpha, but with more red. We then flew back on our PT to go fetch our Wyvern. And then we got the notification that our Ice Chicken died. I didn't even know we actually got the tame. So we whistled follow on our Wyvern and got straight out of there. Now that we have our Wyvern back, we went out and we tamed ourselves a Therizino. And we named him Fred, after my creepy uncle with the long fingers. We found another place to place down an awesome teleporter. I thought this place was pretty good because it's in between the snow biome, the redwoods, and the desert. This is a great mod, especially on a large map like Ragnarok. Day 26, we used the awesome teleporter to teleport myself and Creepy Fred to the swamp area. We needed Creepy Fred to use his creepy long fingers to harvest some rare flowers and some rare mushrooms. We then realized that there was a caustic lion chicken near us, so we tamed that too, and we named him Sally. Day 27, we took off on another adventure, this time once again to find some more elementals. And we found ourselves a fire chicken. He was looking so graceful flying into the skies until we shot him in the face. We of course enslaved him so he could lay us eggs for our own benefit. We were then flying around redwoods, but then we realized flying this low comes with certain dangers. Ooh, crap, 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 crap. Ah. Now, as much as I like getting pounced on, not so much from wild cats though. Day 28, we decided to switch it up a little bit and we went out on our green caustic griffin, Sally. And being that he is an elemental, he does come with a special elemental attack. Turns out it's like a green poo attack. I think he's lactose intolerant. While we're out exploring, we did come across this fire griffin. And because it is a level 130, we had to tame it. A fire chicken got jealous and it came over and tried to get involved. And even though it was a raging bitch and doused us in fire, I had to tame it too. Day 29, you know we had to take out the fire griffin. Because the caustic griffin's lactose issues, you know, might were a bit of a problem. And a fire breathing griffin is just too cool. We made our way to the desert biome where we came across two ice griffins. And I couldn't pass up the opportunity to tame them either. We got lucky and encountered another ice griffin straight after. Is it weird that ice griffins are in the desert biome? It doesn't really make much sense. Once we tamed him, I realized I didn't have enough soul balls on me anymore. So we had to squeeze both griffins close together and teleport back home to send him home. It was a little bit squishy because uh, our caustic griffin was still at the teleporter too. Once we had sorted everything out, we went back to the desert biome only to see this thing. Now we know that can't be good. So the best thing we're gonna do right now is uh, run away. Day 30, we had to clean out our soul terminal of all the poop that was in it. That's a lot of poop. I then wanted to start taming some Omega dinosaurs, but we were running a little bit low on Apex eggs. So we went out to find some Apex creatures. And the first one we found was this Apex Griffin. And then after searching what felt like a long time, we found an Apex Terror Bird. Remember, we can only use females to get eggs even though I'm not sure if the griffin lays eggs. Since we're on a massive taming spree, we went back out on Creepy Fred to go gather some berries. And while we're out there, we came across this Alpha Therizino. And since it's a massive upgrade from this vanilla Therizino, we had to tame it. And we named him Tickle Tickle. Day 31, we were out on our ice griffin and we came across a buffoon Mesopithecus or little pink monkey. So I put a little bit of a bullet in his butt 
and then we tamed him you know because who doesn't want a pink monkey on their team turns out you can ride him and there's something satisfying about riding a little pink monkey wearing a top hat Whee! day 32 while we're out exploring we found this little cute alpha ferox so i stabbed it in the face and it ran away but then i saw it said equipped element to tame so i equipped the element then i used the element near the ferox and then it started doing this weird thingy and it's uh not so cute no more bail 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 abort mission abort mission yeah what yeah what easy you, you, you scared of me we didn't get to tame the little big ferox but we did find something a little bit better the fabled grifficorn they're epic to have especially as flyers so we started shooting it but i wanted to lead it away from the desert area it's a bit hostile here we got him to the top of the mountain and then i put him to sleep once this purple bird tamed we called him mystic because he, he has mystical powers and stuff and it's kind of cool day 33 we went to go see what the grifficorn can do it has a pretty cool aoe attack but apparently it can pick up big dinosaurs like this we then went to the desert biome and we fought a reaper queen and a reaper king the reapers kept going underground so we just picked one up the fact that we could pick up a reaper king that's pretty op for a griffin seemed like a pretty effective strat if you ask me we did the same thing on this reaper queen this strategy was a little bit op but hey you gotta do what you gotta do right and as luck would have it we found another level 90 grifficorn so we gladly welcomed him to our family this day just kept getting better and better right close to base we came across a level 135 omega allosaurus now this team was going to be interesting we set ourselves up on this lovely little perch aimed down the sights of our gun and shot it it was pretty damn fast and then we peeked down the hill to shoot it again only to realize it's so fast it could run up the hill oh crap it's holy crap it made it up it took us a long time to get this dinosaur down but after all it did have 117,000 torpor and once we tamed him we named him omega look it was really late at night when i was recording this so yeah day 34 we took mr omega out and he was doing over 50k damage then we saw a primal allosaurus so we just went in for the fight we were doing 47k damage which was a lot but he still had 21 million health this fight was going to take a long ass time it was very one-sided after all i had some potions that i could use to heal up my allosaurus my finger was really starting to hurt after clicking so much but we finally got the win and one pretty cool thing about killing a primal you get the primal allosaurus costume which makes your allosaurus look like a primal with our newfound confidence we went out with our primal slash omega omega allosaurus and we fought this primal kentosaurus i forgot kentosauruses could do that he swung him around like he was on a hey. ferris wheel but then when things got serious the kentosaurus just disappeared i'd appreciate it if you didn't cheat and go into the mesh where'd he go cheetah run away coward then i went to go visit our friends the wyverns again but yeah the necrotic guys were still there we hate necrotic wyverns they're stupid their attack slows us down and then i got dismounted from our grifficorn then once again we took an l to one of these stupid ass wyverns we did return on our other grifficorn to try and rescue our original grifficorn we whistled as much as we could but unfortunately he didn't make it oh no the morning of day 35 our allosaurus was hungry and it felt like primal carno for breakfast it took a while to get there but it finally got its feast in the end this allosaurus is such a beast it even took down two alpha indominus rexes now killing these indominus rexes comes with an added advantage when you kill them they lay an egg that we can raise into our own indominus rex which we'll do later we then went to this area i don't actually know what this area is called but we found a little perch aimed down the scopes of our fabricated sniper rifle and shot at this omega spino we put him to sleep quite easily now this is normally the part where i fly down to him feed him some kibble and then tame him no this time we need to murder him we need his blood we appreciate your sacrifice mr omega spino back at base we had a baby ice griffin but ultimately we had no use for it so uh day 36 i built myself a metal wyvern trap why you may ask well because of this guy yes that's a level 175 celestial wyvern taming this guy will make our game so much easier and a lot more fun too i wasn't having much luck getting him to follow me into the trap so instead i just sat on the back of the griffin and shot him this guy's so powerful he didn't even react to getting shot wait i think i spoke too soon he's coming for me oh he's coming he's coming bail bail oh i think i got away When we 
woke up, we grabbed all of our stuff, jumped back on a disposable griffin, and attempted to tame this celestial wyvern again. This time at least, we kept our distance. I don't think I've ever been as happy as this moment when we got him down. Yes! Yes, 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 freaking yes. Yeah, it was a great moment, but the moment she was tamed, we named her. Your name's gonna be Sonya. And Sonya be looking fly as hell. We then took Sonya back to base, fed her an experience potion so we could get a ton more levels into her, and then took her out to see how much damage she could really do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is 199,000 damage, plus some others. It's now day 37 and we take our newly acquired Celestial Wyvern to go and try and find an Origin Dino to fight and kill. And fortunately for us, at the top of the snowy mountain, we found an Origin Argentavis. Now we were doing over 200,000 damage, but it had 93 million health. This was gonna take longer than I had hoped. So we left this for another day. Instead, we took on this Primal Kano. It was a lot more manageable than the Origin Argentavis. Day 38, we continued our murderous spree. After all, we are quite powerful. And I even got my revenge on a Necrotic Wyvern. We also murdered these Indominus Rexes and stole their egg. I swear that sounds nastier than it really is, but we did it. Day 39, we tamed ourselves an Omega Spino and an Omega Allosaurus. Enslaving these beasts seems like the right thing to do in order for us to be able to progress in this game. Yes, their eggs are crucial for us to be able to tame Celestials and Demonics. We then faced off against this Primal Megapithecus. We wanted to test our strength against this beast. So after powering up, we went in, gave him a little bit of a fire breath and uh... Yeah, as you can see by all of the numbers, we did some damage. He also did some damage to us too. The ability to be able to fly back is pretty OP in this mod, so we use that to our advantage, of course. I really wanted to see how destructive we could really be, so we tested it out on all these beavers. Their deaths were for a worthy cause. It's now day 40 and we really need to start getting serious if we plan on defeating the demonic reaper empress before day 50. But in order to summon her, we need one of every origin tribute, which means we need to start killing some origin dinos. And lucky for us, one spawned right here. So with Sonya, we went in for the attack. This origin dire bear had over 113 million health, but we were doing 700k damage. So even though this might take a little while, with a bit of patience, we get our first origin tribute. Later that day, I decided that I'd wanted to build an extension on our base, but we were going to need some help. So I tamed a fabled beaver, and I named him Chomp, because he has big ass buck teeth. Day 41, we came across this level 130 fire griffin, and you know I love them fire griffins, so we had to tame him and name him Jasper. Then we went out on our fabled beaver Chomp to go get some wood. I had a pretty hard time trying to turn on these things. It's like I'm doing my driving test all over again. Once we collected enough wood, we went back to base and stashed it all away. Then we got stuck into building our new extension on our base. We already had enough stone lying around the place. Day 42 and we're continuing on with our base. But this time I placed in a tech elevator. Just a nice clean way for us to be able to travel up and down. Yeah, so the aim for this little bit of an extension is just for us to be able to build you know, kind of a stairway into the water. I don't really know why I did it. I just thought it would look cool. I then decided to hatch one of our Indominus Rex eggs. But then I realized they have to eat kibble to raise them up. So I'm going to put this on hold for a little bit. We then went out to go tame one of the coolest creatures in this mod, the Demonic Sheep. <laughs> Now, I thought taming this was going to be kind of a meme, but uh, I went to attack this and this is the kind of damage it does. 600,000 damage. This thing's OP. Day 43, we went out to go murder some bugs because we need to collect their chitin. Day 44, we summoned in the Origin Raptor to gain our second tribute. This battle was a long one. It went all the way into the night, but we eventually got that win and secured the Origin Raptor tribute. Day 45, we spotted this level 140 Celestial Argy, and I couldn't pass up the chance to be able to tame something as good as this. But back to the task at hand. We need these origin tributes or else we ain't gonna make it. This time we brought a little bit of help. We brought our new Celestial Argentavis that we named Belvedere. We brought Sally, our caustic griffin, and a random fire chicken that we had laying around. We needed these guys help because we were summoning in the origin wyvern, which I knew was gonna be a pretty tough battle. But unfortunately in the first couple seconds, the origin wyvern took out Sally and our fire chicken. 
This battle was fierce. It took us a whole 10 minutes to get him down to only 90 million health left. Eventually, once he was down to 36 million health, I had to make a break for it. I was worried we weren't going to win this one. So I made an escape in the cover of the darkness, stopped to gather my thoughts and figure out a strategy. And on day 46, we went back into the attack. But we couldn't see the wyvern anywhere. I was glad to see that Belvedere was still alive. She had lost quite a bit of health, so we fed her a potion and then went looking for the wyvern, only to find him spawn right here. Ah, there you are. We got his health down to 23 million health, 3.2 million health. It was getting close. And then we launched our final massive attack that gave him a direct hit that finished him for good, securing the Origin Wyvern Tribute. It's now day 47 and we're getting really close to that goal for day 50. We're having a hard time finding these origin creatures around the map. We don't have enough resources to be able to summon them all in. But after searching around this big stupid map, we finally found an origin Kano in the desert biome. And I'm pretty grateful that origin Kanos are pretty stupid and get stuck in rocks. <laughs> so defeating this one and collecting our next origin tribute was pretty easy. Day 48, we spot this lizard and it's on fire. So in order to save its life, I shoot it in the face. We hear these explosions and I get worried for him. So we lead him up the hill away from the explosions that he definitely didn't make himself. Then make sure his life is safe by shooting him in the face again. After shooting him multiple times, he went to sleep. So now we know he's safe. Since he's been on fire for so long, we fed him some kibble because I'm sure he's hungry. Once he ate it all, he became our friend. So we named him Wilfred because he's got a fiery attitude like my uncle. Day 49 and we only have one day left before we need to defeat the Demonic Reaper Empress. But we've only collected four out of the eight tributes that we need. This is getting close. So we go to our boss fighting area. We get out our new friend Wilfred and summon in the Origin Rex. Even with Wilfred there, it took us a long time to defeat this Origin Rex. But we did get our tribute that we did need. Unfortunately, it is the end of day 49 already. It's now day 50, the day we fight the Demonic Reaper Empress. But... We still have three origin tributes that we still need to collect in order to summon her. So back at base, I craft the origin Spino summoner and the origin Kairuku summoner. I didn't have enough resources to be able to craft the origin Argentava summoner, but we do know that they spawn around the map quite frequently. So when the sun came up, we spawned in the origin Spino. Now that we have Wilfred the demonic thorny dragon and we were doing some crazy ass damage, we defeated this Spino within minutes, gaining our next origin tribute. Now with the Origin Spino being so easy, we didn't hesitate. We summoned in the Origin Kairuku straight away. And with our epic team with Sonya the Celestial Wyvern and Wilfred our Demonic Thorny Dragon, we slayed this stupid penguin very quickly. So quickly, I actually forgot to turn my HUD back on. But did we win? I didn't even see it happen. We were running out of time to finish our challenge. So we quickly teleported back to base to dump what we had in our inventory. But as we were in the smithy, everything went dark. We knew we had failed our challenge. So we didn't complete our goal that was set to us by Mr. Miola. That means we need to smash some eggs on our head. But before we do, if you are enjoying this video, please smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Enjoy the egg time. Yeah, that's my wife smashing my head with eggs. Even though she's a pacifist, I'm pretty sure she enjoyed this. Yeah, and thanks Mr. Miola, I guess, for making me smash eggs on my head. Now what's our next challenge? Hello, Mr. Aztec. I hope you're doing fan freaking tastic. So I see you are taking on Primal Fear, but I have a challenge for you, sir. Defeat Nova the Destroyer by day 100, or else you have to pour a liter of milk on your head to be posted on your TikTok. Good luck. We'll see you at the end. Cheers for now. Bye. It's now day 51, and we're already behind on our first challenge, and now we've been set our second one already. This is going to be tough, but let's go. I thought maybe it'd be a good time to be able to use some of the tech engrams we have. So I created a tech replicator. Now that we have a tech replicator, I wanted to go mine a ton of metal. But I made the mistake of uh, getting my Anki out right next to an Apex defense unit. Yeah, that was a pretty rookie mistake. My bad. Sorry, Mr. Anki guy. Wow. So now that we're down in Anki, we had to go tame another one. This time I wanted at least a fabled Anki. We ended up finding this one, knocking it out. But when I went to feed it, something triggered my Celestial Wyvern, and uh, my Wyvern killed it. I don't know, after failing this challenge, I keep making some pretty stupid mistakes. For the rest of the day, we kept searching around trying to find another Fabled Anki, but we just couldn't find one. Our goal here really is to be able to make an S Plus Tech Transmitter. They help us find any dinosaur and any creature on the entire map. Day 52 and we continued searching around the map for another Fabled Anki. And after a little bit of time, we finally found one. And it was a pretty high level. 
So we gave him some food and then asked him to be our friend. He said yes. So we named him Max with three X's. Now that we have our fabled Enki, we went back to base, made him a fabled Enki saddle, then put him to work, smashing some rocks for some metal. Day 53, we finally made our first S plus tech transmitter. But I couldn't figure out how to get the freaking thing to work. Bruh. Turns out you have to change some of the code in the game, which I figured out later on anyway. Day 54 and we're focused. We still need to kill an Origin Argentavis. But I wanted to try something out a little bit different. This time we're going to set up a little bit of a trap. To be honest, it was pretty scuffed, but we tested it out and I think it was going to work. So the early morning of day 55, it was game time. We summoned in the Origin Argentavis, had a potion on our PT already, and then kited it into the trap. But as you can see, once we made it through the trap, the doors closed, so the Argentavis didn't go in. It was now time for plan B. But first, we need to say goodbye to our PT. RIP. At the end of the day, we still defeated this Argentavis and secured our final Origin tribute. But best of all, it did give us our last piece of Origin armor that we got. Looks pretty cool. Just black and yellow. Day 56, we started farming some metal. We needed as much as we could possibly get so we could create some more turrets and some more ammo for our little trap over at the boss killing area. It's now day 57 and today is the day we decide to fight the Demonic Reaper Empress. We brought a few friends to help us out with this fight. I know it's going to be hard. We brought our Omega Spino, Wilfred our Demonic Thorny Dragon, and a random lightning wyvern that I quickly raised up earlier. And of course, we were going to be riding Sonya, our celestial wyvern. Now, I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous when summoning in the demonic reaper empress. I really didn't know what to expect. She launched her first attack at all of our dinos, and we lost our spino straight away. Okay, the spino did not last long at all. Then we went in for our attack, but we got a little bit close and things got hot. Sonya's health dropped dramatically really quick. Wow, and we almost died in like two seconds. We then got the warning that something is blocking you from powering up. We had gotten the Reaper's health down to 69 million health. We were still in the battle. Then we got the notification that I was dreading. Wilfred had died. But the battle rages on. We got her down to 55 million health, and then this happened. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. The moment we heard the fireballs coming in, we knew it was all over. Once we woke up from our death, we quickly ran and grabbed all of our gear, grabbed a random griffin, and then went back to the demonic reaper empress. Once we got there, we could see Sonya getting slaughtered by all the minions. This was not looking good. The demonic reaper empress showed her face again, but unfortunately, we lost the best thing that ever happened to us, Sonya. Oh, Sonya. Oh, Sonya. We will miss you. Oh, Sonya. I love you, Sonya. Well, it's day 58 and Sonya's dead. Let's move on. Today, the mission was to be able to build another greenhouse. We wanted to make enough kibble to be able to build an army to be able to take on these bosses. Day 59, 60, 61, and 62, I fell into a deep depression. After losing Sonya to the Demonic Reaper Empress, that kind of sucked. We didn't even get to complete our challenge in the first place, so I just explored the map and farmed a ton of materials. Day 63, we snapped out of our depression and we are back in action. So we grabbed Belvedere and started going on the hunt for some more Origin Dinos to be able to spawn in the Demonic Reaper Empress once again. And on this day, we defeated the first one, the Origin Argentavis. Day 64 and we got busy and we slaughtered an Origin Spino. It was at this moment I realized how powerful Belvedere really was. Soon after, we found this bear hiding in the woods. And even though you can't see much with all the damage numbers, we murdered him too. And since we had a little bit of time left in the day, we found this level 145 demonic thorny dragon. Now he's no Wilfred, but he'll make do. Day 65 and we finally figured out how to use the S plus tech transmitters. Yeah, apparently you need to place down multiple transmitters in order to be able to use it better. We had also fully raised up this Alpha Indominus Rex. Although it's pretty cool, it's not as good as where we are currently at in this late game. I suppose it swims pretty good for a mutated T-Rex designed by Jurassic Park that's totally not related to Ark at all. Day 66 and we were looking to recruit some more soldiers for our army and we found this level 140 Demonic Thorny Dragon, another great addition to our team. So to test out to see how good these Thorny Dragons really are, we summoned in the Origin Rex and took it on one on one. And as you can see, a direct hit from this spiky Thorny Fire thingies do some pretty crazy damage. Can I get a rip Origin Rex in the comments below? Day 67, our goal was to be able to find and kill an Artifacto the Great. He's basically just a Megatherium wearing a funky looking top hat. 
And when we kill them, they drop artifacts. We found one thanks to our tech transmitter. There he is. But once we killed him, we didn't get any artifacts. We found a second one that was pretty close by to the one we just had. He was a low level, only a level 20. And once we killed him, again, no artifacts. Now I'm frustrated. So we went back to base, summoned in the Origin Raptor, and burnt him to death with our Thorny Dragon. Rip. Day 68, and we still need two Origin Tributes in order to be able to summon the Demonic Reaper Empress. So I started out by summoning the Origin Wyvern. And with the Demonic Thorny Dragon, taking this ferocious idiot down was quite easy. So we backed it straight up and summoned in the Origin Kairuku. I'm not even going to edit this. This is how quick this battle was. Watch. Ooh. Yeah. It was over just like that. I really wish we made better use of the Thorny Dragons earlier. Sonya might still be with us. With the success of us having these powerful Demonic Thorny Dragons and having gained all the tributes that we need to summon in the Demonic Reaper Empress, I went to prepare the battlefield with two Demonic Thorny Dragons and summoned the big scary bitch in. We powered up our Thorny Dragon, launched our first attack, and started doing some seriously good damage. We got her down to 55 million health, but when we got close to her, she started doing some big damage to us. And unfortunately, we lost our second Demonic Thorny Dragon. 40 million health left, and then she cocooned us, making us stop right in our tracks. 30 million health and we're released from the cocoon. So it's time to create some distance, then she cocoons us again. 17 million health and I'm starting to get nervous. Will we win this one? I'm unsure. We then release a barrage of attacks, hoping to get this final blow in. Our Thorny Dragon's health is dropping rapidly, so I go to take a potion. I've realized that there's still a cooldown on it, but we get the win anyway. Oh no, we won! We won! We won! Oh my god, <laughs> bro, no way! That was so close! Defeating the Demonic Reaper Empress felt so sweet. Even though it was 18 days late, we still got there. But we did get this chest piece that got us looking thick. Day 69 and we're not wasting any more time. Our next goal is to defeat the Celestial Indom Emperor. But once again, we need to kill more Origin Dinos for their tributes to be able to summon him in. Day 70 and we continue the Origin Dinosaur Hunt. And our Demonic Thorny Dragon turned this Origin Spino into dust. Yeah, underneath all that smoke is a dead Origin Spino. Day 70 and we remembered we have an item that can summon in a Demonic Reaper Empress that we can tame. Apparently she's weaker than the other one. We rode on the back of our Grifficorn so we could shoot an origin train arrow at her. We got a shot off, hit her right in the head, but she also shot us too. Frickin' hell. And yeah, Mystic died in the fire. This time we returned on Belvedere, because she's got so much health, we figured she might last a little bit longer than one hit. We couldn't find the Demonic Reaper Empress. I could see some shimmering on the ground, and then a tag came up from the awesome Spyglass. Turns out she was knocked out, but underneath the map. So the only thing we could really do was wait here and go AFK until she woke up. When she finally woke up, she chased us around, but we're trying to find a vantage point so we could get a good shot on her again. But just as our luck would have it, she hit me, killed me, and killed Belvedere too. Day 71 and the realization of losing two of our favorite creatures just kicked in. This time I'm going to return to the Demonic Reaper Empress solo, and if I die, I die. And that's exactly what we did. We died. I can keep doing this all day. So we go back for the second time. And this time I had a clear shot at her ass. So I took it. I think we landed it. I don't think she really appreciated us shooting her in the ass. Once we returned to her, we realized we must have knocked her out. She must be having sweet dreams of being shot in the ass. So we fed her some kibble, tamed her fully up, and then we named her Karen. Because with her anger issues, she gives off Karen vibes. Now the scary Karen's on our side, we tested her out by fighting an Origin T-Rex. Yeah, she was doing some pretty crazy damage. RIP. Holy crap. She destroyed him real easy. Day 72, all the way through to day 75, we went on a massive taming spree. We hunted down these fabled dinosaurs because we needed their eggs to be able to tame some celestials and some demonics, which will help us out largely in these boss fights. One really cool tame I got was this fabled unicorn. One cool thing about him is he poops out this rainbow colored unicorn poop. Apparently it's useful for something. Day 76, myself and Karen, our demonic reaper empress, spawned in the origin wyvern. And our thick girl complained to the manager, so the wyvern died. 
Day 77 till day 81, we did all the boring yet very necessary things in order to fight and defeat the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor. This included breeding some of our demonic thorny dragons and celestial argies for a really powerful army. Day 82 and it's game day. It's time to fight the celestial indominus rex. And because of our previous experience fighting the demonic reaper empress, we went in with a thorny dragon army. We brought our alpha indominus rex too. Cause why not? Once we summoned this beast in, we went in for the attack. With all these thorny dragons attacking it so harshly, we were doing some pretty decent damage. He then spawned in his celestial wyvern minions, but they didn't have much of a chance. 26 million health? We look like we have this one in the bag. From then, his health drained quite rapidly. Then we got that dub. I don't get why this was so much easier than the demonic reaper empress. Later that day, we spawned in the tameable version of the celestial indominus rex, but I did it with a 1000 IQ strat. I spawned him in the middle of this little canyon area. This way I had a clear shot of him, but he couldn't hit me. Or so I thought. He may have got the hit on me, but we still took him out with the Origin Trank. Now we have a Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor, and we named him Darren. Because it kind of rhymes with Karen, and that's like the opposite. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Day 83, and we're starting to creep up to 100 days. And we still need to defeat two of the toughest bosses in the game before we can get to Nova the Destroyer. The first boss on our list is the Chaos Guardian. But in order to summon her in, we need all of these items. Now we have most of them, except for the Celestial Souls and the Demonic Souls. So I guess we gotta go out and kill every Demonic and Celestial we can find. And that took up pretty much our whole day. Day 84, while we were hunting down Celestials, we came across a Celestial Wyvern. Now, do we kill him or do we tame him? We ended up hitting him with an Origin Trank, knocked him out, but he got stuck in this rock kind of thing, and I couldn't access his inventory. But it wasn't for nothing. We killed him and took his soul. <laughs> Look at that. That's a level 145 Celestial Ferox. Now he's a level 145 Sleeping Celestial Ferox. And now he's our best friend, who we've named Feroxylicious. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Feroxylicious's girlfriend. Yeah, that's her. She's a little bit more aggressive. And her name is Feroxy. Day 85 and our baby making operation is well underway. But we have something pretty important to do. And that's kill the ever so fierce Chaos Guardian. We had now collected enough souls to be able to summon in the Chaos Guardian. The fact that this boss is so tough, these are some of the friends that we decided to bring with us to help defeat this boss. We have Karen, our Demonic Reaper Empress, five or six or seven other Demonic Thorny Dragons, a couple Celestial Argies, and then of course we're going to write Darren our Celestial Indominus Rex. He has a nice AoE attack that's going to help us out. But let's just do it. Let's summon the Chaos Guardian in. Once spawned in, he came straight for the attack, trying to take me and Darren out. Then Karen came in with his spiny fiery thingies and smashed him. We launched our massive AoE attack. He spawned in some of his minions. It was getting relentless. He had killed one of our Argies straight off the bat too. He starts with 935 million health. I knew this one was going to be a long one. Then we get the notification. Karen had died. But we can't give up now. We've got to finish this fight. 680 million health and his health is dropping rapidly. 590 and we've lost most of our friends that came to help us. 400 million health is still going down. 325 million health. Are we going to win this? I take another potion just to prevent us from being the ones dying. 200 million health left. We launch another big attack. 100 million health left. 8 million health left. We get the win. Oh, the relief. It feels good. Thank God. After all of that, the only dino we have left is this one little Argy. Now, is it because he's good or is it because he was a chicken shit and stayed out of the fight? Without hesitation, we returned back to base to find out what materials we needed to be able to summon in our next boss, the Spirit Guardian. And as you can see, we need 14 more Celestial Souls, 13 more Demonic Souls, one generic artifact, one more Origin Blood, and 93 Toxic Blood. So for the next six days, that's exactly what we did. We went out and searched for everything we possibly needed. It was quite a grind because Celestial Dinos, for some reason, didn't spawn very much on this map. Demonics, on the other hand, were everywhere. Now, I don't think we would have been able to make it in time without the s -Bus Tech Transmitter. It was such a help. And thanks to it, we reached our target by getting all of the Celestials and all the Demonics that were pretty tricky to find. And if you're wondering how we got all of the artifacts, we either look for an artifact of the Great, or I just kept grinding the Redwoods Cave. It's basically a free artifact. And at the end of this day, we finally had enough stuff to be able to craft the Spirit Guardian Summoner. It's now day 92, and today is a day that we fight the Spirit Guardian. Now, I know this boss is quite difficult, so we brought an even bigger army than we took for the Chaos Guardian. And now it's time to summon in the Spirit Guardian. 
We summoned her in, we launched our attack, making our entire screen blue, and then the spirit guardian made our entire screen red. That's a massive rip for a large chunk of our army. We took a potion to make sure we weren't the ones that died, and then the spirit guardian took out another chunk of our army. And after that, we'd only taken out over 30 million health out of 833 million health. And to make things worse, the spirit guardian's really hard to see during the day. It kinda blends in with the sky. It had been a few minutes, but we haven't done that much damage. I just keep reaching for this AOE attack. The spirit guardian sends all his minions in, we fend them off, and then he does this attack that launches us really far away into the sea. I now have to rethink our strategy, so I put Darren away and head back to base. I remembered there was something that might be able to help us out right now. So I flew over there, and spotted this Chaos Griffin. I quickly knocked him out with an Origin Trank, then tamed him, and then went straight back to the fight with the Spirit Guardian. By now, it was day 93, and we weren't doing much damage, but we were still in the fight. A lot of our attacks kept missing. Then we got his health down to 619 million health, and it kept dropping, then this happened. There goes our Chaos Griffin. This was starting to get frustrating. Next, we return with our Demonic Thorny Dragon. We've had a lot of success with these guys, and I really like their attacks. We got its health down to 574 million. Then the Spirit Guardian hits us with this attack that sends us back to hell. We may have died a few more times than I would like, but we're not giving up. This time, I return on the Celestial Argy. Every time we hit it with a direct attack, it seems to do some pretty solid damage. And then when the Wyvern hits us and knocks us all the way out to sea, that seems to work in our advantage. It's nighttime and we got the Spirit Guardian down to 455 million health. Day 94 and he's down to 352 million health. Now he's at 195 million health. 98.5 million health. 56 million health. This is starting to look good. 20 million health. 14 million health. And we launch our final attack. We finally kill the Spirit Guardian. But he also hit us with his final attack, which takes us out and our Celestial Argentavis. We have now defeated the Spirit Guardian and the Chaos Guardian, which means we have six days to defeat Nova the Destroyer. But we have quite a lot of items that we need to gather so we can summon in Nova the Destroyer. Now it's pretty repetitive stuff, so we're just going to skip to day 99. Day 99, we finally have enough materials to be able to make the Nova the Destroyer Summoner. But before we fight the final boss, I wanted to tame one more thing to add to our army. This level 130 Chaos Rex. Day 100, and it's now our deadline to defeat Nova the Destroyer. So with our army of basically every dino that we had left at base, we prepare for our final fight. It's game time, baby. This is Nova the Destroyer. She launches her first attack and basically kills 90% of our dinos. Now we are riding our Chaos Rex because I figured within the tier list of dinos, he should be more powerful than all the rest, right? We're off to a great start. Nova the Destroyer is already down to 110 million health. 97 million health and it looks like the Indominus Rex is the only one left out of our entire army. Nova the Destroyer pummels us with some attacks and then kills us. It's not completely over though. We do return on the old faithful Demonic Thorny Dragon. 92 million health and Nova seems distracted by our Indominus Rex. We make our attack, he starts chasing after us, but then we run away. Because we have a long ranged attack, we want to keep our distance. I then discover that there's a couple Argies of mine that were chilling out here. They must have got blown away from the attack earlier. So we return to Nova the Destroyer with our Argy friends and go in for the attack. Only for our Celestial Argies to get slaughtered. 75 million health and we maintain our distance. It looks like Nova seems to be a little bit distracted by the turret setup we made earlier. So with that, we keep our distance and keep shooting our spiky fire things. 41 million health, we're starting to make some progress. 21 million health, we're about to get there. 18 million health, there's so much going on on the screen at the moment. And... Oh, we died. We return back to find one of our Indominus Rexes just hanging out up on this hill. He must have got knocked back from one of Nova's attacks earlier. We search for Nova and then when we find him, we go back for the attack. We get Nova down to 8.1 million health. It's getting so close. He drops the 5 million health. He launches a big attack. And we die again. We had stashed a couple demonic thony dragons away. But unfortunately, this one was our last one. And this is our last chance. Nova had 5.6 million health left. And we're on not a great thony dragon. Powered up. We go in for our attack. Hope for the best. Keep our distance. He comes close. Come on, 3 million, 2 million. Come on, baby! Yes! 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 Rip to you! Rip to you in the face! Rip to you! That's you, you dead body bitch! We finally slayed the beast. Look at you, you look ugly. You know why? Because you killed everything of mine. We did defeat Nova the Destroyer, but yes, it is on day 101. So yeah, technically we did fail our challenge. So go follow my TikTok if you want to see me pour some milk on my head. 
Until next time, peace.